Hello and welcome to another session of this course marketing management part 1. This, this is week 3 lecture 2. We are going through the third module of the course on capturing market insights and this is lecture 2. So, I am going to talk about today the different components of marketing information system. I believe in the last class you have already gone through the introductory part of this marketing information system and a little bit about marketing research process. So, I am going to talk about components of marketing information system. Broadly process strategy has already talked about in the previous class the components of marketing information system and from there as you know there are uh, broadly these uh, four components are there which are the part of this uh, broad marketing information system which consists of internal reporting system or your internal databases. Then you have marketing intelligence system and after that we have a marketing research system and marketing decision support system. So, I am going to cover the, uh, these two things the first two the internal reporting, internal reporting system and marketing intelligence system. Now, when we talk about this internal reporting system, we have we the company, the organization try to utilize the data which is readily available insights, inside the organization. So, during its uh, the usual processes of uh, delivering the value to the customer, the organization itself collects lot of data <coughs> from its uh, customers, its, its partner, its suppliers and all the other uh, uh, different types of information from the uh, different kind of uh, stakeholders to that organization. Important sources of information inside this internal reporting system are the sales information system, which is a very, very important source of uh, information for the organization. The organization generally trains their uh, sales force and their uh, sales management to basically not only sell the product in the market, also understand the, the goings in the market, what are the things that are basically happening in the marketplace, what are the, the things that are happening at the distributors and so all these things they, they get first hand information through this sales information system. Generally these days you will see the organizations employ some kind of software tools even to gather and formalize this kind of a sales information system inside the organization. Then you have this order to payment cycle where from the ordering uh, the when, when the customer places the order about the product then probably the time it is being delivered to the customer and the payment time when the customer has actually paid for the product or the services that he has uh, got from the company that is this order to payment si cycle uh, that is another very important source of information and it gives into lot of insights that what is happening to the company basically what kind of customers it is serving, what is its position in the market in terms of the cash flow. So, lot of information related to that comes from there. Then you have pricing information by product line. So, you have the pricing information about your pro product lines. Also in this integrated with this pricing information about your product line is the information from the competitors uh, product prices also. So, that gives you a very clear picture about uh, what is actually happening in the market and basically that can also to an extent help you in understanding the consumer response towards <coughs> your product. Then you have the inventory stock level data uh, that is something which is very important what, what are the stocks level at your distributors and what are basically in B2B market that is, this is something very important is that what are basically the stocks or the inventory level at your customers level or the key accounts level. Then you have competitive information with coordination of promotional campaign, how your uh, once you have designed your promotional campaigns, what is the response of the market, what is the response of the customers, how much they have liked that uh, uh, promotional campaigns, how it is affected to them. So, post campaign uh, responses are also collected inside this uh, internal uh, reporting system. And one of the things that I have uh, seen that usually all the blocks of this uh, internal reporting system yeah. uh, become very clear if you put it in the context of B2B marketing yes. or industrial marketing. But actually it can be very well used for B2C or consumer product marketing as well. 
because consumer products are uh, really speaking sold through wholesalers and distributors. Yes. So, it in a way these uh, reporting items also tell us about our competitive strength. For yes. example, if you are actually a distributor of HUL, then you will pay upfront to yes. HUL as soon as the stuff leaves from HUL gate mm. towards your warehouse. So, that means that HUL actually works with uh, negative working capital. Yes. Uh, they have, they have. In fact, you have to pay in advance sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, and, and therefore, it shows uh, that becomes a very important part. If, if tomorrow uh, HUL sees that there is a huge resistance to that and uh, people are, uh, uh, distributors are not agreeing to that sort of term. That means, it will immediately tell us that is very valuable. The pole is not there. Yes, that, uh, that they do not have that uh, in, in terms of the porters five forces that we have discussed that they are losing their bargaining power with respect to the major buyers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very nice example. And in fact, uh, the, the competitive position can also be understand whether what kind of this uh, payment cycle you have. So, a company like uh, HUL which is a very strong market position in the some of the FMCG products uh, sector. So, there basically what happens is because of the market pull they can afford to have this kind of negative uh, working, uh, capital. working capital thing. Uh, on the other side if uh, there is a new competitor, a local competitor and if he tries to enforce that kind of policies. It will not work. It will not succeed. So, that means there is a basically there has to be a push and they are probably the, the policies with the, which they do the business with their distributor has to be entirely different. Right. Yeah. The next thing is uh, into this uh, uh, marketing information system is the second component is this market intelligence systems. So, the basically uh, un, again the, the importance of the sales force comes into the picture that sales force uh, is something which is there in the field and it it gives you the first hand information what is happening and in fact, uh, since Professor Chatterjee has talked about B2B marketing, you will understand the uh, role of the sales force is very important in the sense, this is something which, which comes to, uh, brings to you also the information like what is going to be the future demands about the product. So, you will not have demand forecasting method, uh, methods, quantitative methods in B2B market unlike probably B2C market, probably people will more rely on the the sales force estimation of their customers uh, requirement because they can go to the customer ask them what is what is your existing capacity and how you are going to expand your uh, capacity for the next year and when you basically have these two things you combine that data at the individual uh, sales region. So, you get basically the entire sales demand from a particular region. On the other side what happens is when you basically collect the data from the all the regions, you can collectively say what is going to be the demand or what is going to be the likely demand in the future for that product for the company. So, the next thing is that distribution channel part information gathering. A distribution channel partners like wholesalers, retailers, they also give you very important inputs. When there is a probably over emphasis I would say on uh, in probably the, the role of the customers in providing the feedback. But if you see, if you see the information collected from a retailer, that is a sort of basically a collective or a gathered information from their side also and that has to also be taken into account along with the customer uh, uh, related data or the customer feedback related data. So, that is another important thing. Then you have uh, these days uh, probably companies are also employing this cu customer advisory panel where you, you have a set of customers, your uh, uh, customers on your panel which consistently keep on giving you the information or the feedback about the product and sometimes what happens is these people become the expert in the product. So, uh, probably that information is very useful. However, the company should be also be very um, uh, what I would say is that they should be very sensitive to this kind of information is that uh, some kind of biases that comes from the this kind of advisory panel should be avoided while accounting for the um, marketing planning. Yeah, actually the what happens is that this customer advisory panel I have dealt uh, with this subject in depth. Uh, it is very important to not only be uh, sort of cap be, be captured by your important customers 
because uh, you know uh, in, in literature it has been called the tyranny of the served market. So, if you are creating a, a advisory panel you would feel tempted to invite your most important uh, customers, the biggest customer, the largest customers, but you have to be very careful to construct this that there should be representation from your uh, possible, customers. possible customers. If it is feasible get some uh, main customers of your competitors into the advisory panel. Get people who are today not your customers are in on the fringe, but uh, being served by very small uh, competitors, yeah. but invite them in because they might give you uh, uh, some very important trends. So, you know there is a whole uh, 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 lot of interesting theory developed by Clayton Christensen on this disruption, uh, the, the creative disruption, creative dis destruction or uh, what he, he called the, uh, you know, the innovators dilemma. The issue there is that many times it is seen in business history that very large companies they ignored the trend that was happening at the fringe at the lower end of the market. Yeah. And so, when PCs came large computer manufacturers like DEC or IBM. Wang or IBM they ignored it initially. They said uh, this is just uh, some hobby, this has nothing to do with our com computers which are meant for industries, banks and uh, critical applications. And as a result they uh, completely uh, uh, sort of ignored that rapid development that was taking place there even though it was and ultimately many of those large computer makers like DEC or Compaq they actually disappeared. Yeah. And, and, and these small makers you know like Apple which started in a garage uh, became a behemoth uh, world's most valuable company. Yeah. So, so, so they therefore never ignore uh, the small customers or could be customers or fringe customers. Yeah. So, construct this customer advisory panel very carefully. Diversity. Otherwise, uh, the large customers will always say uh, you know uh, make things better, yeah. bigger, smarter, faster, but uh, always the competition does not come from yeah, there. So, you will remain intact into the existing needs of the yes, market Yes. and sometimes what you are saying is very true, true to the B 2 B markets because they will try to influence the product design, your product design according to your need and probably to the disbenefit or uh, disadvantage of your customer, their customers. So, correct. that is very true. So, then you also have um, the sources of the information in the form of secondary databases and this, this includes basically the data which is being generated from the government side, uh, demographic data, the, the data about the, uh, the, the economic aspects of uh, the country. So, all those things are very important like uh, you can see the, 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 the uh, the, there are quite a few companies besides these uh, which I have mentioned uh, which probably are into generation of the secondary information data uh, or the secondary information can be used as a secondary information sources like AC Nielsen, uh, CMIE, uh, Euro Monitor, Frost and Sullivan. They all come with the overall market data also they come out with their uh, own assessment of the customer needs and trends. So, these are basically another sources of important data source which can be integrated with the other information which is available inside the organization. Then you have the, the basically this another option for gathering the marketing intelligence is you basically ne network externally you go to the different agencies which are into this uh, specific job of uh, intelligence gathering in the market. Uh, related with this network externally is uh, one of the very, uh, very debated practice in the ma marketing is probably you must have known this is dumpster diving mm -hmm. where, where the company actually goes into the uh, garbage of uh, other companies and they try to see what is from those garbage they try to basically collect it and then yeah. try to understand what is happening there. So, it is almost uh, industrial espionage. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, its origin comes from the spying uh, where probably countries have used this uh, dumpster diving for basically tracking the nuclear programs of the other countries. Israel has done and <laughs> they have done lot of things in this area. So, then you also have the purchase information uh, from the customer side. So, this is broadly what comes under the marketing intelligence system.
and then you have another thing that that is emerging as probably one very prominent area in this uh, uh, market gathering the market inside is this databases and the data mining. So, data mining is the exploration and analysis of large quantities of data in order to discover valid novel potentially useful and ultimately understandable patterns in the data uh, and the, the, the large data that you gather from the customer side uh, can be used for uh, uh, finding out different kind of patterns in the consumers uh, uh, buying behavior or con in general consumer behavior is that you can figure out is classification and prediction. So, based on the consumers behavior you can classify the customers and you can predict about their uh, based on the pro uh, previous behavior of the customers you can uh, predict about the future behavior. Then you have a very uh, popular technique among the marketeer is this cluster analysis where you try to cluster the customers based on the certain attributes and then you have outlier analysis this is becoming outlier analysis does not look so prominent, but now it is gaining so much of important where you try to find out among the, the, the given data set uh, and the uh, among the different data points which is the data point that is different from the other data points. Now, the importance of this outlier analysis is if among basically the different kind of transactions if a particular kind of uh, transaction exhibit a certain or consumer exhibit certain kind of uh, behavior in its uh, transactions, then probably that could be a probably a signal for the fraud detection. And it is also basically a source of rare, uh, rare in, uh, event analysis. So, this is another very, very probably good or emerging uh, application of this database uh, uh, marketing, uh, database uh, uh, based probably the analysis and the data mining. Then you have trend and evolution analysis, which is about the behavior pattern changing over the period of time. So, you can understand the how basically the things are changing at the consumer's end over the period of time and accordingly you need to modify. Uh, this is something which is very natural that over the period of time the customer's needs and their wants are going to be uh, are going to shape up in a different ways and that a company needs to basically tap and probably track very closely, so that you can change in your offering or probably you modify your offering according to the changing needs or the requirements of the customers. So, I will take you through some of the examples of this data mining in the marketing area. Like uh, as, as shown in this uh, picture, you, you can see that uh, just looking at this uh, the market basket of uh, a customer, you can understand couple of things like uh, if a person is. Uh, uh, is purchasing and going through this uh, uh, probably a um, uh, big retail format. So, you will see that uh, where should the detergent be placed in the store to maximize their sales. You can understand what should be the product placement inside the retail store. Uh, I mean what is basically the association of different kind of products. So, if a, a consumer uh, purchases a product A and B is the product C is going to be purchased along with this A and B. So, the, those are some of the very important things that you can understand and probably how does the, the probably the role of the brand comes into the picture that uh, whether the brand increases the propensity of purchase intention or not. So, these are the some of the things which can be uh, understood by data mining and one example of this is like uh, <coughs> here I have given that if a consumer A purchases uh, uh, two similar products A and B. Uh, to a customer which who also purchases this product A and B, then what uh, based on this similarity you can understand that if a, this this consumer too basically purchases this uh, drink, then obviously you can recommend to this customer because uh, their preferences are quite same. You so you you can recommend this customer also this uh, this product to consume and which actually increases the probably the chances of the sales for the company. Uh, from the real life example as you can see if you basically purchase a particular kind of product in the Amazon like I have basically tried to purchase a book on dynamic capabilities by David J. T. S., which is about the kind of dynamic capabilities that organization should acquire in to sustain in a very volatile business environment. So, you will see that with that kind of book probably there are other similar type of books which are on the topic 
I get the recommendation from the, the Amazon that customers who bought this item also bought the similar kind of books. So this is basically one predictive uh, type of modeling which is being used to uh, increase the sales. Then the other thing is like uh, if the product attributes are same, so if a consumer has purchased in the past a certain kind of product, so supposedly there is one type of drink that he has purchased and you have another similar products of the similar type. So based on the past data, the company can tell uh, or probably suggest to the customer that you should go for this kind of product because most likely you are going to like this product based on your previous preferences. Sometimes it is very helpful for the customer also because their time of uh, search for the product uh, goes down and probably it is very helpful for them or they probably f uh, feel that the company is also doing a good job for them also. This is profusely used today by all the uh, e-commerce people. Yeah. So whether on Flipkart or on Jabong or on uh, Snapdeal, yeah. you will find that if you buy something for kitchen, then they will suggest some other uh, kitchen uh, yeah. equipment yeah. which may go hand in hand. Yeah. So I will just give you a, a briefly what uh, we have talked about in the previous two example is while the previous one was on the similarity of uh, preferences of the customer, this is on the similarity of the product attributes the recommendation is happening and there are various ways in probably you can uh, mine the data and come out with the patterns that can be used by the marketeers to probably increase the sales in the market and also probably solve some of the problems which uh, companies face like uh, the, the frauds which happens in, in the business transactions and some of the other uses could be the rare event analysis and all those things. So with this probably I will uh, wrap up this session and when we meet in the next session we will talk about marketing research process and then we will take you through the different phases of this marketing or uh, six steps of the marketing research process and then we will go into the each of those steps in a much more detailed way. Thank you. Thank you.